500, 499, 498, 497. 3, 2, four, 1. That's good enough. I needed a proper countdown from no. 500. 3, 2, 1, that's it. Three, right, two, guys. one, guys. Well, all right. Good morning. I mean, good morning. Morning. You're making everything short. <laughs> I'm short. <laughs> good morning. <laughs> Today is. That's what you get from a short girl. Monday night for us. Tuesday morning for you guys. We didn't give you a devotional Friday. We didn't give you a devotional yesterday. Friday. Yeah. We don't do it Friday. Friday morning, they have a devotional, and we didn't do it. Yeah, we did, didn't we? No, we didn't. Yes, we did. Well, we skipped one of them. It wasn't Friday. Oh, was it Thursday morning? We skipped one last week. I think we did a short one is what we did. No, we skipped one. I think it was the Wednesday to Thursday. Because it got really late on Wednesday. Either way, man. Either way. But they got way. a Bible study. Either way. They got an amazing Bible study. An amazing Bible study. An amazing Bible study. But guys, you guys truly understand because it was just really long two weeks. And yesterday, I'll be so honest that I was just, I couldn't even keep my eyes open anymore, guys. And we spent how many hours with uh, Brother Anthony de la Garza? That was so awesome. Yeah, we went to hang out with him. That dude's crazy. <laughs> no, it was his birthday. <laughs> so amazing. I love but, our brother, man. Yeah, so we went to hang out with him. It was his birthday. Yeah. I say he's an old man, but I'm older. I'm one year older than him, so I can't say that. No. But yeah, you know. To me, to I can say he's an older man because... You're an old man, brother. So we got to <laughs> hang out with him, his mother, um, Ernie, Ernie, and uh, his brother was there, mm -hmm, and his, his little nieces, you know, and... Um, little Sabrina, she's so cute. <laughs> and then we left with the pizza, and Abraham ate half of it. And the other brother ate the other half, Matthew. Yeah, so... But yeah, um, it was uh, Brother Anthony... As you guys know, he's always on here. He is the super cat guy. <laughs> so, but yeah, we had a great time, Anthony. I, I know you're watching. And um, um, we realized that now that we broke the ice, I want a front door key to the house now. <laughs> <laughs> actually, actually, he doesn't even want a front door key. You know what he's going to do? He's actually going to break through the wall. Like the Kool-Aid man? Like the Kool-Aid man. Yeah, that's what he's going to do from now on. But we had so much fun. We laughed a lot. Um, we just had an amazing time. Just yeah. just spending time there was just amazing. I can't wait to do it again. Anthony, you have a sweet mother. Mm -hmm. Amazing mother, too. Yes, Josie. So. Thank you so much for your hospitality. Um, and just for sharing your heart with us. Uh, you're a woman with so much wisdom. You and Ernie, we appreciate you guys so mm -hmm. much. And just for sharing your home with us. And and just for sharing your heart with us. I, I definitely, um, I just can't wait to be able to sit with you again. You're uh, definitely a wise, wise woman. And me, myself, uh, as a woman, um, I, I just can't wait to be able to sit down and talk with you more and, and just be able to just continue learning. Then we you. had a good Holy Ghost moment in the end. Oh, it's beautiful. The presence of God was thick. Mm -hmm. Oh, man, it was it was nice. Absolutely. So. Absolutely. So by the time we got home, I think it was almost uh, 9 o'clock. Um, and I told, it's funny because on the way home, I told the boys, what, 20 minutes still? We're all like... Turn on the oven, get it ready, get it ready to 425. We're coming with a pizza. <laughs> we're coming with a pizza. You know, that's just. It was one of those Papa, Papa John? Papa Murphy's. Papa Murphy. Papa, Papa something. Papa Murphy's, yeah. Papa and Smurf. I, <laughs> I said, get it ready, the oven, get it nice and ready, and we'll be right there because uh, Sister Josie sent dinner for you guys. And they're all like, really? So, <laughs> you guys, we have been so busy. I'm not kidding that I literally cleaned out the whole fridge uh, maybe like three or four days ago. I have not been grocery shopping. That's how busy that we've been. That baby's empty. It is because empty. Because we haven't had a chance. Yeah, it's empty because we. I have not had a chance yeah, to get to not, the store. Not because we're into starving. Yes. We haven't had a chance. We just have not had a chance to literally walk into the store. 
um, because we've been at the church till almost midnight every night for the last few days. And I told my boys, I am so sorry. Just go grab something to eat. Just go grab something to eat. And I, I keep telling them. I thought you were going to send them today. You didn't. I was going to send them to the grocery store, but Abraham's tired. He's yeah, been out. Late. He's been working out in the field. Um, even on the days when there's storm days. He actually has to go out in the rain, guys, and he has to measure. Um, he has to measure the soil out in in the storm whenever there's rain or anything like that. He has to go oh. out, guys, and he has to weather all of that. So I know he gets tired, and he's like, "Mom, he's all I'm. I'm too tired to." And, I'm, and I understand him. Like right now, I asked him. I said, "Babe, do you want to?" He's like, "He's like, no. Let me just go grab something." I said, "Okay, go." <laughs> But um, guys, you know, we're catching up on some rest. So bear with us. You did not get a devotional, but you're getting one right now. Yeah. It won't be probably super long, but yeah. I am going to uh, catch up on some rest. I know David probably is too. But where are we going to go to? I don't know. Can I just pick? I don't know if I want to do that either. Why? I, I want to. I like doing that to you once in a yeah, while. Yeah, I know, but sometimes the verses you pick are a. Uh, Deserve a forty-minute thing. That's you gotta. I gotta have. A, um. A what? Ultimate decision, because I certain verses I'll know how long I can talk well, about it for. Give me a I chance to actually make sense out of to it. To pick. But yeah, guys, it's been busy. Um. Hopefully, um, you have ordered Pastor Thomas's book on Amazon. And I don't have it here to show you the title again. Actually, is it behind me? Still? Oh, you got his books already? No, I have my book. Oh, oh. Treasure. Wait, that's not clear. In Earthen Vessels. Pastor Thomas. This is on Amazon, guys. You can get it as an ebook, or you can get it as a paperback. Um, it's through our publishing. And... Um, Amazing, amazing book, guys. I'm in the middle of doing Always With You, the novel. The, if you've seen the movie that we did um, out of Pericletos Films, we are writing a book. As you guys know, every book has more information than the actual movie because in a movie, you got to pack a whole story in a 90-minute movie. But in a book, you know, you get to put more details in. So I'm really, really excited about it. What's cool about it is that the first 400 people to buy the novel from me, it's going to be a package. You're going to get the book, the DVD, and the soundtrack. But, you know, that'll be up on the site later. But right now, in these next few weeks, um, I'm, I'm writing that novel and I'm really excited about it. You found something? Mm hmm Let me see if it's something I can actually do. Where? Uh, Simple. Okay, but what's the context of it here? Okay. Yeah. Let's see what happens. Simple. Simple. So, the verse she wants to talk about is John 4? Mm -hmm. Is it 4? Yes, 4. Shout out to Tony and Michelle Paleo in Phoenix. We just got off the phone with them a little while ago. Yes. Really exciting things, guys. If you are from the Phoenix area, you got to let me know on this on this uh, comment, right? Yes. Comment, comment thingy. What do you call it? Comment board? Discussion board. No, it's not a discussion because it says comments. Write a comment. And if you are from the Phoenix area, check it out. We're, we are we have uh, Tony and Michelle Paleo. They came to visit us the first time we went to the cabin. They visited the church. Uh, they have a small group that are going to get started in the Phoenix area that are going to be associated with Well, they already us. did start it, though. Yeah, mm -hmm. but this is going to be like something they're building up to officially. They're hoping in April if mm -hmm. things go. But like I said, if you're in the Phoenix area, let us know. Um, once they get things established and maybe even a little before, we're going to be in direct contact with them and, um, 
Yeah. Uh, I'm yeah, really I can't wait to go it. visit. Yeah. yeah, I can't wait to go visit. Hey guys, please do not do not get on me because yesterday was the day that I I literally brought everything home to just email all your guys' contribution letters and I came home and I literally closed my eyes and fell asleep. So literally. Literally, okay guys. I was just so exhausted. So don't be mad at me. I will send them all out to you. Okay? So bear with me. They will all go out to you. Hopefully you'll all have them in your little emails by tomorrow. So just hang in there. They'll all be in your emails by tomorrow. So okay. the verse I wanted to talk about with the Gospel of John, chapter 4, verse 26. Even though we're going to read that one verse, it kind of builds up to that. But we're just going to read that first. Um, John 4, 26 says, Jesus said to her, and you're like, who's her? And we're going to talk about that. Jesus said to her, I who speak to you am he. Need to say any more, though? Come on. Oh. Why do you read in the same translation as oh, me? Oh, stop it. <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> it's right up there. Oh, my God. Babe. Okay. For well. what? Oh, no, it's not. It's down there. Yes, I was right in the same. Where am more. I? More, more, more. Oh, A lot God. more. <laughs> more. Right there. Okay. All right. I am he, said Jesus. That's it. Keep going. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. Okay. okay. Why are we talking about this verse? First of all, it's because Sharon said to talk about it. But second, <laughs> what is the significance of this verse? And, and it actually it is significant because there's a lot of people that actually say that Jesus never said he's the Messiah. There's actual atheists that say, and even Muslims that say, that Jesus never said that he's the Messiah or the Christ, which means the anointed one. So here's a verse here. Where Jesus is having a conversation with the Samaritan woman. What's a Samaritan is basically, I don't know how to say it any more nicer. It's kind of brutish, but it's a half-breed. Meaning, the Jewish people follow their lineage and keep, they, they, they don't marry outside. And if anybody does marry in, they become Jewish. But back in the Old Testament days, the people of Samaria intermingled with the Canaanites and people they weren't supposed to. So because of that, in the Samaritan area, they were half Jewish, half something else. So the, the full-blooded Jewish people treated them really bad. So pretty much they become like the, like they call them the mutts. Yeah. Yeah. It was basically like the way it used to be in the 60s where... It says, no coloreds allowed. Mm. They were very racist toward the Samaritan people. The Jewish people, here's the thing though, they had to travel through Samaria. The people up north in northern Israel where Jesus was at to get to Jerusalem had to pass through Samaria. And the people down <clears throat> in Jerusalem and Bethlehem, if they wanted to travel north, had to pass through Samaria. This is how bad and how racist the Jewish people were to the Samaritans. They could have walked right through in one day, but they rather walk around, go all the way around and take two or three days than to even go through Samaria. That's how much they hated them. Wow. But Jesus, because Jesus was not racist, said, let's travel through Samaria. And they traveled through Samaria and they reached the well, and Jesus was hungry, and he's like, hey, guys, go get me, go get me some something to eat. Go get me some carne asada, some burrito, something. And I'm going to sit right here. So they left. They left him there, and a Samaritan woman came along. And first of all, the very fact that Jesus talked to her, she was surprised. She's like, why are you a Jew talking to me? Mm -hmm. 
you know, and, and it's like, so basically she knew that Jesus was Jewish and most Jewish people, first of all, wouldn't go through there. And if they did go through there, they would never, they would look down on them. Yeah. They would walk on the other side of the street. They wouldn't take the same, same elevator as them. <laughs> you know, they were just very racist toward them. And anyways, this woman and Jesus have a conversation. And um, in the conversation, I don't want to read the whole thing, but I just want to kind of share with you. If you want to read it, read that whole chapter, okay? That way you make sure that what I'm telling you is biblical. Just read the whole chapter, you know, but I'm just going to kind of walk you through it. So they have this great conversation and um, almost a, a, a debate because she basically tells Jesus, yeah, you Jews don't know where you worship. We worship here in this mountain. You guys worship at the temple, basically, you know, and Jesus like, uh, yeah, you don't know what you're talking about. He goes, but you know what? The day is going to come when your little holy mountain don't mean nothing and neither is a temple. The day will come where God is going to seek his true worshipers who will worship him in spirit and in truth. You know, so that's a profound thing. Jesus like, when the day's coming, where it ain't going to matter where your little temple is at. That God is seeking true worshipers. Mm -hmm. So then Jesus goes on to tell her, he goes, hey, why don't you get your husband? And she goes, oh, I don't have a husband. And Jesus says, yeah, you're right. You've had five, and the one you live mm. with now ain't even your husband. Boom. <laughs> Exposed. So at first, she says, oh, you must be a prophet. You know, and this is what comes to this conversation right here. Because in the verse before 26, it says this in 25. It says, the woman says to him, I know that the Messiah is coming who is called Christ. When he comes, she tells Jesus, he will tell us all things. So what she's doing is she's like, listen, we can sit here and argue all day and all night about the mountain, about this and that, but I know the Messiah's coming. And when he's coming, he's going to set us straight. We'll get, mine says when he comes, when he arrives, we'll get the whole story. And what does Jesus say? The verse we said, and Jesus said to her, I who speak to you, am he. Mm -hmm. 26, I am he, says Jesus. You don't have to wait any longer or look any further. Yeah. Jesus is like, there ain't no other final authority. I am the authority. I am he. I'm the one that everyone is waiting for. So when people say that Jesus never said he was the Messiah, slap them a couple of times, and then open up John 4, 26, where Jesus tells this woman, I'm the one that you're waiting for. And you know, the reason why I, I kind of stopped there, it's that our, there's a lot of times in our own secrecy, in our own moments, there's many times that Jesus will show us profoundly many things, but yet then we still turn away from him. He will show us. Um, we'll debate with him the way she did. Exactly. And we'll know. Sometimes we don't even journal. We don't even write things down. But he'll still show us. But yet then we turn around and we just continue doing our own thing. Not realizing. Or we do realize. And we're like, nah, that wasn't him. And then we go off go off our own way and we just keep doing what we're doing and then once again here comes jesus knocking and shows us once again but yet then we debate once again and it doesn't stop us dead on our tracks and we just keep on doing and he shows us how real he is in in our lives and uh it, it doesn't stop us you yeah. know you know the other day if you go back maybe last week sometime, I can't remember which devotional, but there was a comment. And and the person, you, you probably are watching now, and I want to tell you that um, even though I disagree with you 100 million times percent, um, I like that you were respectful about it. He basically, um, it was a long comment about, he says, I don't believe Jesus is the Messiah. 
And he gave all this scripture reference and how. But I left it. Normally, I'll delete that stuff. Like, yeah. like, I don't have a problem deleting nothing, you know. But I left it because, um, and if you're watching, you came at, at me very respectful. And I appreciate that. Because you're just stating your opinion. You weren't bashing or you weren't doing nothing. Uh, and I didn't reply, but I, I'm replying now to you and to anybody else. Is um, It's a waste of time to try to convince me that Jesus is not the anointed Messiah. He is the risen Christ. I will take that to my grave. You will not, you will not budge me. You will not shake me. He's done too much for me, for us. I have witnessed him do so many things. There is no grave with the bones of Jesus in it. His grave is empty. I won't fight for a president. I won't fight for anything else. But for him, I will stand. Yes. And for him, I will die. And for him, I will kneel. Because he is Lord and he is king. And nothing is going to shake that. So if somebody wants to comment and re be respectful, that is fine. But if your intention is to shake it, I'm going to take it to the grave. My last breath will be Jesus. Amen. That I have... There's a thing, you know, when you play craps, in a, in, and I said this before, when you play craps at a casino, there's the pass line. In the movies, people say they have a, this real, they have all these chips, and they're like, I'm all in, and they put all their chips in the pass line. I take every single second of my life, if every second of my life was a chip, and I got all these chips, and there's a line that says Jesus. We're all in. All in. You know, and if I know, and I know some people might say, man, that sounds fanatical. That's right. <laughs> and some people say that sounds kind of, kind of uh, uh, Jesus freakish. That's right. Yes. That sounds kind of illogical. That's right. Mm -hmm. That sounds kind of uh, intolerant. That's right. So be it. Yeah. You know, um, he's the Christ. He's the Messiah. He's the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. He's the good shepherd. He's the light. He's the salt of this earth. He's the light of this earth. He's the king. He's the one that reigns. He's the one that created all things. He's the one. And there is nobody else. All other gods are false. He's the only one that rose again. He's the only one that reigns in full power. He has all authority. He's God Almighty. So, yeah, not going to convince me anything else. I'm a stubborn man. I'm a stubborn man all my life, and he made me stubborn for him. Amen. And he loves, and if you are stubborn, brother and sister, um, yeah. continue to that's be stubborn. The, that's the one thing, that's the one thing it, we should be stubborn for. Yeah. For. It's the only one thing we should be stubborn for, guys, <laughs> is yeah. for Christ, you yeah. know? If you're going to be stubborn, if you're going to be any of that, it has to be for Christ. Yeah. You know the, Absolutely. the football player that everybody piles on him and he's holding on to that football for dear life? Hold your salvation and hold the biblical principles that you were taught like that. I don't care what the, the world hits you with. I don't care what the world tackles you with. I don't care how much they stack on you and stack on you. Do not let that go because that's the only thing. That's the only reason you are breathing. Is because God has gave you that breath and his name is Jesus. God has a name. I'm not happy with any prayer or whatever that says, oh, in God or in God we trust. What God are you talking about? Because of God I know has a name and his name is Jesus. Jesus, yes. And his name is the only one where all men can find salvation. He's Lord. Amen. So, uh, yeah, that's where we stand. <laughs> <laughs> take that to the bank right you know and it's like that's just the way it is you know and i was a very stubborn man in the world and god's like i could use that stubbornness i can use it you know and uh, i think sometimes god gets the most stubborn people you know and 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 we just we're ride or die man for jesus <laughs>
We are, guys. You, you know? know, if something if something's gonna stand in the way of of a serving or or yeah. anything, then sometimes yeah. you just gotta let things go, guys. You know, because yeah. you know, serving is serving is everything, and just you know, Jesus is everything. You know, you know, it's it's um, it's humbling. I you know visiting Anthony yesterday. And, I mean, I'm sure he shares it, so I'm sure you guys, you know, he doesn't mind sharing that. He had a stroke at 27 years old. He just turned 48, so that's 21 years. Yeah. And he became paralyzed. He can't even talk. It paralyzes vocal cords. And um, here he is serving God on a bed, and he speaks through If you ever see him comment, he's doing it. It's crazy because we finally got to see his computer. <laughs> His eyes, his computer follows his eyes on a typewriter, and he can type, he can go to YouTube, he can go to Facebook. With it, It's amazing what technology does. Amazing, amazing. And then he, he can actually type a sentence, and he clicks enter, and a speaker, like, speaks what he is saying, so he can actually conversate. Pretty amazing voice <laughs> that he uses on there. Yeah, I want him to use a Jamaican voice, but... <laughs> or a Terminator. But, anyways... In all seriousness, guys, it was humbling because I, I asked him a question. I said, why, why us? Why do, you, why do you watch us? What is it about us? Because his life is literally there. There's, I don't know how many churches, sermons, teachers, and, and I'm not saying we're the only thing he watches, but, you know, when he says we're his pastors, I don't take that lightly. And that's why I, I wanted to know, why us? Because he doesn't, he, see, here's the thing, right? We, that can go to church, to church, to church, we can, we can get sucked in by the nice building, the nice sound system, the, the, the programs they have, the, the singles group, the married group, the... We, we can get sucked into all that, but for somebody to be in his bed, literally seeing us through the screen, I wanted to know, why us? And I can't remember verbatim what he said, but basically I, he typed there for a long time and then hit the thing so the voice can say. And he says, because nobody is real like you guys. And biblical, basically. I'm, I'm not talking verbatim. Do you remember exact words? Yeah, yeah something like that. Yeah. You know, and, and that means something, guys. That means something. It messed me up. <laughs> you know, it really does mean something because, and even his mother, who has been to many churches and, and been at church for a long time, you know, and, and for her to be like, it's, it's hard to go into a church and even feel the anointing anymore. And as she's telling us this, as we're sitting in there, she goes, I feel that anointing right now. And we don't take that lightly. I'm just like, Lord, I don't care if we stay a small church. Just don't leave us. Yeah. I don't care... What happens? I don't care about a mega church. I don't care about that stuff. Lord, just don't leave us. And here's the thing. He never does. He says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Here's the problem. Ministries leave him. Pastors leave him. Teachers, he, he, he will never leave. But somehow, some way, they kick him out. Because in Revelation, where it says, I knock at the door. I stand at the door and I knock. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people, they will use that for a sinner's prayer, like, oh, he's knocking on the door of your heart. No, actually, in the actual context, he's knocking on the church door. He's knocking on the church door. <laughs> Tell me, why is Jesus mm -hmm. knocking on the door of his own church? Mm. That would be like our children. Knocking here when they should have a key to come and eat and dine and sleep as much as they please. How can 
Jesus be knocking? How dare we ever put Jesus in a position where he has to knock at our church? No, I'm sorry, my friends. Jesus is the owner of the church. He's the one that opens the door to us. His name is on the deed. Why do you think, and it's, here's the thing, it's, it's not cliche. I, I don't joke around, and I said this for years, that Jesus Christ is the senior pastor of House of Rest Church. Amen. And the pulpit belongs to him. Yes. It is not mine. It is not yours. It's his. And we should be so gracious and so willing and so wanting um, to fulfill the calling of what it is that, that, you know, he wants us to do, you know, to, to build on the kingdom, you know, in, in every way, guys. I, I remember the days where people were just so willing and wanting to do God's ministry, mm -hmm. you know, and so excited about it, where we didn't have to ask or we didn't have to be looking and seeking for those who wanted to do God's will and God's work. Yeah. You it, know, it's like, you know, you never had to ask or anything. People were just wanting, they were just wanting, like, what can I do? What do I need to do? Mm -hmm. You know, it, yeah. it's like, you know how it makes, it confuses me. It gets, it confuses yeah, me. Yeah, you know how I make sermons out of anything? <laughs> I mean, yesterday I made a sermon, I was talking about aquariums and I was talking about trees falling over. You know, we're talking to Josie, Anthony, Anthony's mom. She was talking about how before the pandemic, they had constant calls of, of people trying to be caregivers. There was an overabundance yeah. of caregivers that looking for work, looking for work, looking for work. Once the pandemic hit, everybody got an unemployment. People were afraid because of the virus. And now it's like, it's hard for them to even find someone to help with Anthony. Yeah. And I say this because I see the gospel and everything. I said, as she was saying this, how it's hard to find somebody that actually will come and be a caregiver to Anthony to where before the pandemic, it was nonstop people trying to do it. And I, as she's saying it, I saw that same reflection in the church before so many people. I'm not saying before pandemic. I mean, years I grew up in the church. So I know what church would used to be like. I'm talking late 70s, early 80s. I know. And I wasn't a Christian, but I was raised in a Christian home. And I saw the hunger for God. And it was overabundance. And now, it kind of feels like Josie's position. Like, man, people used to, were begging to work. And now I can't find anybody because everybody... Rather just get their unemployment check. And sometimes maybe that unemployment check in the spirit of something else. There's other things in this world that pacify us. Where we no longer hunger to serve God. How does that even make sense? No, it does. You know, like, I know today I got a little frustrated and I called you, you know, um, you know, you guys know I love to work, you know, I love to do ministry, I love to do the work unto the Lord, and we do things with excellence to the best of our ability, you know, and, and I, and I, and I bend my back backwards, and you, you do things, you know, with excellence wherever you go, mm -hmm. and, um, and I just know that, you know, something more was expected from me at work, you know, in a whole mm -hmm. different stance, and, and it became a little bit harder for me. They made it a little bit harder for me. And and I think I called you. I, I called you out of frustration because, you know, I, I had built a whole system that made it easy for me after my brain surgery, that made it easy for me to be able to cope with it easier for me. And I loved, I loved being able to go to work and be able to just keep my brain going after the brain surgery because it, it made it easy for me and it, and it kept my brain active, you know? So me being able to work in what I love to do and then being able to um, work at the church too and being able to do all of that, you know, it, it helped. 
you know um and yeah it does get overwhelming sometimes guys to be able to do both things you know um but you know today they they changed everything up on me um and it became very very overwhelming for me their expectancy of me is much different and it was too it became too much for me to cope with and um you know the first thing that my husband said he says you know what if, if you can't do it you know what'd you say I said a lot yeah he said you know we're gonna be okay and if i'm like you don't need to be there first of all i said god's always provided he's always he ain't gonna stop now you i know? said i said if they run you ragged i said they can always get another person to do your job i can't get another sharon you know so and... i said if you need to walk then walk i said god's always provided he always will because he promises. I said, don't sit there. I said, you need to tell your boss, listen, it's going to be like this, like this, like this, or else, I mean, I can't tell you how to run your business, but I'm not going to do it. You Straight know, up, because God is not a God of confusion. You know, and I, I know that, it, you know, it had already been placed in my heart. Like I had I had told him, you know, maybe it's time for me to to really step in and to really, you know, go back to doing full-time ministry um, because I'm already doing full-time ministry and I'm doing work on top of that. So maybe it's just time for me to go back to doing full-time ministry. Um, and and possibly that's that's where God's leading my heart to do that, you know. Um, so, you know, we'll, we'll see, guys, you know. But I know that, uh, I know that something's, something's going to budge. But um, now that my boys, you know, my boys are, are working and they're helping out and doing a lot as well. So and I think that, you know, with, you know, David working, you know, on, on a lot of things as well, I, I think maybe I can put forth and, and really start stepping up some other stuff. I'm doing all the administrative at the church as well. And maybe I can really do more full time um, there at the church now. Yeah. Yeah. So. so. All right, guys. Um, hopefully that gave you something to think about, something, Absolutely. Uh, something to, uh, splash around your brain for the day, you know, and, uh, hopefully you're having a great morning. Hopefully the coffee was good. God bless you. Yes. And, uh, we will see you tomorrow. All right, guys. We love you guys. Okay. So bear with me one more day and I'll send that stuff out to you guys. Bye. God bless you. We love you guys.